Okay, welcome to T2's Book Club. I got a really special one for you today, and I'm excited to say I have a bunch of more books that came in. Uh, I mean, I got some new ones over here. I got the guy that gave me a bunch more free ones. I'm going to do another book haul video. But first, I want to talk about Mr. Mercedes. Boom! I got that in. I've already been reading it. I'm not even done with it, so I'm going to do a review early. I'm only I got like the last 80 or so pages, so there's no way I can spoil it because I don't know what happens. But I'm going to try to because I think I know what's going to happen, and it's even giving me some ideas of my own ideas for books. But I don't know if I'm ever going to write a book. But let me just say, this book, <clears throat> I was not expecting this at all, and it will not stand up straight. It's the only bad thing I can say about it. It doesn't stand. Oh, there we go. I like everything about this book. I didn't think I was going to like it that much. Um, I'm not really into detective novels because I think they're all going to be the same basic plot. It's going to be like if I want to watch something like that, I'd just go watch CSI or I'd watch one of the old film noir movies or something. But this was not at all what I expected it to be. Um, let me just give you the basic premise of it. It starts out. A bunch of people are waiting to get to this job fair early in the morning. They're all like trying to get there early. So it's kind of like when a new game comes out at Best Buy. and everybody, There's a huge line. And this guy pulls up in a Mercedes. And he runs everybody over. And he kills like 16 people. One's a mother and her baby. So this cop, he apparently went on TV and announced, I'm going to catch this guy. And then he never could. So a couple years later, he retires. And then it's basically about how bad this cop's life is. He's trying to... He watches a lot of like Dr. Phil... And Jerry Springer, and he's thinking about killing himself. So it starts out, the cop is like at his low. And then it switches to the killer's perspective, which is why it's not really a mystery, because you know what happened. You're seeing the killer's perspective and the detective's perspective at the same time. So the killer's at this high, and the detective's at this low. Because he's proud of killing these 16 people and getting away with it. And then he also, the woman he stole the Mercedes from, he talked her into killing herself. So he's like starting to kill individuals instead of just being a thrill killer. He, he's like a hacker and he works in this electronic store. And he hacks computers, he hacks like traffic lights, he hacked like stole her pass key for a car. That's how he stole her car. So he's at a high, text at a low. Throughout the book, him pissing off this detective, he'll send him like a letter. And then also I'm going to review the TV show at the same time, which is something I've never done. <clears throat> I'm going to review the book and the TV show because I, I wanted to read this book because I saw that there was a TV show. I'm like, oh, a Stephen King TV show. I better read the book first. So I've been waiting on this fucking thing to come in so I could read the TV series. So I'm actually like racing the book and the TV show to like, I'll read the book and then I'll watch some shows until it gets almost where I'm at with the book and I'll read the book some more and I'll watch some more shows. But like last weekend was all about Hellier and this weekend's all about Mr. Mercedes. So I'm just marathoning that. And I got Path of Exile patch coming out here in like an hour. I gotta get my oil changed before I can play it. So I'm having a good weekend. If you guys should too, read this fucking book. It's amazing. So he sends this cop these letters, and then the TV show he sends him videos, which is different. And there's also some more stuff they added, like his neighbor kids. They had like a tennis ball he put this smiley face on. Let me show you the front of this book also. This is a really good cover, and it's a good size. I like when paperbacks aren't like this size. They're like this size. They're big. It feels better for some reason. And I feel like this is what people would call a pulp fiction for some reason. I don't know. If, see, when Quentin Tarantino's movie came out, it changed. Nobody says pulp fiction anymore. What's the definition of pulp fiction? It is dealing with lurid or sensational subjects printed on rough, low-quality paper manufactured from wood pulp. So that's what it used to mean before the movie came out. That's what I was talking about before. Like, when something happens like that, you can't Google it anymore. Like when Pink became a singer and you can't Google color pink. So, the cover. It's blood raining down on a blue umbrella with a yellow smiley face sticker for the period of Mr. Mercedes. And that's the killer's um, call sign. The blue umbrella is this... Oh, here's one thing I'll ding the book for. He has this chat room that he talks to the killer on called Under Debbie's Blue Umbrella. It's like a European website that it's kind of like Instagram. Is it Instagram? The one that deletes everything as soon as you post it so nobody can have any record of it. It works like that. And that's not really a good name for a website. I mean, they would probably call it Ubu or something today. They've abbreviated it or put an R at the end. 
Like, who the fuck is Debbie? You don't have a chat room after a single person if a bunch of people are going to be using it. I guess it was supposed to be like two people meeting under an umbrella in silence and then they talk and then nobody knows about it again. So you got the killer's blood from where he kills people and you got the umbrella and you got the, the icon. Pretty good. Uh, I like the, the way it feels. And I like that it's well worn by the time I got it. I feel like I'm probably the fourth person to read this copy. But you can read it fast. If you're a person that doesn't like reading books, this is one of those I would recommend. Like Ender's Game, I would also recommend like that or Live for Your Die. This is going up there with my favorite books, like those and um, Broken Universe is one of my favorites, um, Ready Player One. This is up there with the greats, in my opinion. Um, so he sends his cop this letter, or video, and he pisses him off, and he starts making him less depressed because he gives him something to do, so he's kind of like coming out of retirement, but he can't really tell the police because he's not legally supposed to be going after killers anymore because he's retired. And he ends up talking to the girl sister who the guy sold a Mercedes from. And he ends up having sex with her. And this is all because the killer got him into this in the first place. The killer's whole point is to try to get him to kill himself. Because he sees, he's watching him being depressed and watching TV all the time and drinking and he's getting fat. So he's trying to just get him to go ahead and like he's always playing with his revolver. In the TV show he's not got the revolver. He's just got his cop gun in a safe. But he's always like looking at it, looking down the barrel, thinking about killing himself. And then he starts... They start switching roles. At one point, the cop starts taunting him on this website. He says, yeah, there's no way you could be the killer. We have proof that we didn't release that shows that you couldn't have been the killer. And he's like, what the fuck? And then he's like, I don't have credit for killing these 16 people. So that's like this whole reason for living. And he's also got this weird relationship with his mother. And he's like, he's a motherfucker. Like, almost literally. And I think in the TV show, he probably did fuck her. It's a little, like, his mother's, he, man. When he's, the cop is talking to his girlfriend, she's like, can you give me a, um, what do you call it, uh, a biography, where, I forgot what to call it, a profile, can you give me a profile of this guy, and like, what, what do you know about him, and he's like, oh, uh, we always had these people from a university that were psychologists, or studying psychology, they came in, they were like the real profilers, that's not really what I do, it's not really my job to do that. Then he's like, just list off all this shit that he just figured out and he knows. He's like, oh, he's going to be between 20 and 35. He's a surrogate father figure for his mother. And he uh, he's highly technical and probably has no friends. And he has a low-paying job. He's like, I thought you weren't good at this. <laughs> he just lists all this shit. So they start switching places. The, 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 the killer starts getting real pissed off. And he has all this shit goes wrong. He accidentally poisons his mom because he was trying to poison... Okay, the cop has this black friend lives next door. Moses Yard helps him with IT shit, which is really good uh, character in the TV show. It's exactly how I pictured him. And he was going to—he has this dog, an uh, uh, Irish Setter, or whatever. And the guys in the TV show, the cop, the detective was Irish, and I didn't even realize that from the book. The way he was talking, and he was Irish. But I guess I could see now that I've read the book first. I have this idea in my head. I watch the TV show, and I have these characters that I actually know what they look and sound like so then the second half of the book i'm seeing them differently because i saw the tv show this has totally never happened before uh that's probably why oh what was that recent tv show i watched it was a game of thrones but like if you'd read game of thrones first and then you watch the tv show and then you see the characters you'd probably have to swap them all around in your head so he's gonna poison this kid's dog right and his mom finds the beef and cooks it and eats it herself and poison herself. And he's like, oh, shit, now he just killed his mom. So now he's, like, getting on this, like, suicide bomber thing. He's got all this explosives. He's going to bomb this boy band concert because uh, there's going to be a bunch of people there, including that black kid's sister, who is about two years older than I expected to look like in the TV show. But she looked like I expected. The detective looked like I expected. The sister of the girl... It says in the book that she's blonde, but in the TV show she's brunette. But she looks exactly like I was picturing her because I didn't read the blonde part. So the characters in the TV show, I'm giving high praise. Good casting work on there. So um, he's getting ready to bomb this boy band concert. This is about where I'm at right now, so I haven't read any farther. But he's going around looking like, how can I get into this place? The security's pretty good. And he sees something, and he's like, oh, now I have an idea. He goes back, takes back his suicide vest, takes it apart... And I'm thinking he's going to use a wheelchair because nobody checks people that have a disability. 
So if you put all the explosives in a wheelchair, they're just going to assume he's a disabled guy. They're going to let him in. Plus, it's metal, so you go through metal detectors, and nobody's going to check it. And now I didn't realize this until I was starting to make this video. What's on the cover of this second book? Guy in a wheelchair with a laptop. Fuck yeah, I nailed it. I think this is the second book. This might be the third book because it's got the end of Watch. But then Finder Keepers. See, that's just what I don't know. I know the TV show is like three seasons long already. And it's still called Mr. Mercedes. I don't know if it's like three seasons of this book. Or if it's like season one, season two, season three. And maybe it's going to end season three. Maybe it's going to keep going. I don't know. But it's a fucking good character. Bill Hodges. Trilogy is what it's called. So... Now, now I'll give you the book review. I want to talk about a little bit about prolific prolificity or pro prolificness. I don't know what the word is. See, Stephen King. I started reading Stephen King. I don't know what the first book I read, but I need to just do a whole video about Stephen King books. I really got into like insomnia and road work, books that nobody ever talks about. But when I was in high school, everybody was talking about Christine and Carrie and, uh, what's the other one? Not Gerald's Game. Maximum Overdraft, maybe? Or wasn't it like a Ride the Lightning or something? And I never read any of those. And The Stand, I think. People were watching the TV show The Stand. Everybody was into Stephen King for that. And It, I read Needful Things, but I didn't read Storm of the Century or It. But they're all kind of in the same kind of universe. So then I got into the other books that I liked. And then I read the fucking Dark Towers. And Saturday Night Live did a sketch one time about how prolific Stephen King is. And like it's weird that he just has all this closet full of books that he's written that he's never released that nobody knows about, like manuscripts. It was a joke. I thought, okay, now that the joke's been made and he's done the Dark Tower series, which kind of ties most of his books and all this one universe of multiple universes, it's probably over now. He's going to kind of quit writing. But he didn't. He kept fucking writing. So then I read Tom Gordon, The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon, I think. Or maybe I just read a novella of it or something. I didn't really think it was that great. And Black House with Peter Straub, I didn't really like that one. I kind of read half of it and I put it down. But I love, like, Dreamcatcher. Some of the books I like, I love to sell. It's kind of hit, hit or miss, right? So I was thinking, like, I don't know if he's going to keep writing books or what. I didn't really follow Stephen King for a while. So then I heard about, like, The Institute just came out and some other books. So I'm like, oh, shit, he's been writing more books? And one of them is a, d a detective novel, so I don't really like detective books, so I'm not saying it'll be any good. But then there's a TV show about it, so like, I don't know, maybe I'll give it a try. It's like, you don't expect somebody that's that prolific to keep being that good, but I guess you should expect it because the more you write something, you don't get worse. The more you do something, you just get better at it. But, uh, like when I read, see books by, like, uh, William Patterson or Anne McCaffrey, when I was at the bookstore, I'd see just like title after title after title. Just like, how can they be this good if there's this if there's that much quantity? How can the quality be there? So they're probably just following a formulaic kind of. Oh, this is what um, fantasy people like, or this is what detective people are like. Uh, he's a guy that wrote all the lawyer books. Uh, I think he's in one of these. Um, John Grisham he writes a bunch of detective stories. Or, Lawyer stories. I don't know if they're all good. I think I read part of Rainmaker in high school and it was pretty decent. But when they write a bunch of books in one subject or one field, you don't really expect them to be good. Or I don't anyway. I don't know what other people think. But yeah. I guess Stephen King just write whatever the fuck he wants and give his own spin on it. And they call it a hard boiled mystery. I mean, there's no mystery because you're with the killer half the time. You're seeing both perspectives so you know what's going on. So I'd call it a thriller or suspense. Yeah, this one calls it a thriller. I'm reading the, the front, um, what do you call these, snippets. One of them says the last 80 pages should be read in one sitting. So yeah, it's almost like you could digest or consume a book like this. You can read really fast and it's really good. And it almost makes you feel like it was written fast, like he tapped into the muse and he just wrote, like, sat down one night and just wrote this book out in one night. Oh, it's not written badly, it's written very well, but it feels like he just tapped into the, the essence of the universe that spits out, like, ideas and shit. Like, musicians, like, have anybody seen that movie yesterday, uh, based on the guy who, t he didn't time travel, like, this is, um, 
What was that thing called? The Millennium Bug. The Y2K Bug. It happens and everybody's power goes off for 12 seconds. And when he comes back on, he realizes that nobody knows what the Beatles are. And also, like, nobody's ever heard of Coca-Cola and a few other weird things. It's a pretty good movie, but it's, like, a pretty basic concept. So he's, like, playing this song uh, yesterday for his friends. They're like, oh, that's the most beautiful song I've ever heard. He's like, oh, yeah, the fucking Beatles wrote it. And they're like, who the fuck are the Beatles? He's like, what? <laughs> so he looks up on the internet. Nobody's heard of the Beatles. So he, like, has to remember, like, Penny Lane and Eleanor Rigby and all the weird British ones that he can't think of. So he's writing all these Beatles songs and like acting like he wrote them and producing them all. And like he's the most famous musician in the world. And it's like, um, he's more prolific than you would believe because it doesn't really, like the Simpsons are kind of like that with predicting the future. Like, are they time traveling? Do they know what's going on? Or how do people, people don't believe you when you're that prolific and that good. Which in that case was true because he was like a time traveler or whatever. So... That's kind of what I'm talking about on this book. I've been waiting to make this video. I'm really hyped about if the other two books are as good as this one. Holy shit. It's going to be great. I'm trying to think if there's anything I forgot to mention. Uh, man, there's stuff in the TV show that was not really in the book. And they didn't really... Like, the black guy didn't really have his jive kind of slave accent he's joking around with the detective with in the book. I mean, some of that stuff, it's not really a big deal. But they added something in the TV show that was like, there's this whole thing with this uh, um, a white power guy that's going to the, the store where the killer works and he kills him with his device called Thing 2 that he can like open doors and turn off. Uh, he can change the lights and their traffic lights and stuff with it and he makes him have a car wreck and stuff like that. I mean, they just added that in there. It's pretty dope. There was another scene of something that they added in. All the scene with the kids with the, playing hockey outside. And he goes outside in the backyard and catches one of the kids climbing his fence and he pulls a gun on him. And like in the book, he's kind of... His relationship with his ex-partner is different. A little bit. Like he's nicer to him in the book than in the TV show. He thinks he's going crazy and he's going to kill himself and he doesn't want to say anything he says. But it's kind of interesting. Like there's, I'm getting a different story from the TV show than I'm getting from the book, but I'm liking both stories. So... I mean, this is a win-win.